We have Katie Jamison here. She is the president of Engage Community Building for Nonprofits. She is passionate about nonprofits, the communities they serve, and the impact they have on people's lives. Her experience crosses sectors of nonprofits and association leadership and focuses on community building and engagement. She currently manages special projects for the Mesothelioma Applied Research Foundation, where she's involved in community advisory boards comprised of patients, caregivers, and bereaved community members. Katie has also spent years working with Minnesota's engineering community through Engineering Alliance Minnesota, its foundation, and Minnesota Math Counts. Katie has a BA in Business and Communications with a minor in French from the U of M and is a certified association executive through the American Society of Association Executives. And I personally am proud to call Katie a friend through some of that work. So with that, I will pass it over to Katie. Absolutely. Thank you for that lovely introduction, Sarah. And I'm glad to be here today. I am going to share my screen. I plan to share a little bit about this project that we've been working on. And Sarah has graciously been involved as our in our task force for this. So well, let me just get, can you guys see the screen? Okay, great. Let me just make sure I've got my settings correct for audio. There we go. Okay. So um, as Sarah mentioned, I am a consultant and I currently am working with Engineering Alliance Minnesota. And we are undertaking a project called STEM Meets the Challenge of the Pandemic. And this is a collaborative project meant to bring educators and STEM professionals together throughout this um, very different school year. So I look forward to sharing a little bit about that with you. So thank you for joining us today. Um, if you have any questions during our presentation, just jump in. I'm happy to answer them and uh, chat a little bit further about what we have going on. So our program is, uh, first of all, who am I? Um, <laughs> I just went through this lovely bio and background, um, but a little bit more about my history with engineering and with STEM outreach. Um, as Sarah mentioned, I am the director of Minnesota Math Counts. I spent many years as a full-time staff member of the Minnesota Society of Professional Engineers and led all of their professional continuing education programs as well as their outreach programming. So um, before STEM was really a thing, lots of interactive programs with kids and um, been involved in how that's shifted over the last kind of decade or so. Uh, STEM meets the challenge of the pandemic is a collaborative program and uh, we really identified that there you know, was this gap occurring this year and there's been lots of different ways that that has shifted throughout the school year. Um, but so many of the ways that individual STEM professionals were involved in hands-on activities in schools was not gonna happen this year, was all online or was very reduced. And there was really an opportunity to bring together some of the great work our educators do and connect with the STEM professionals who have had some role in helping keep our lives functioning during the pandemic, who are helping lead us forward, and who are these people and how did they get into STEM? Because as we all know, we don't take a linear path to what we do professionally. And hopefully some of our young people today can identify with some of those things and maybe see how they could be quote unquote helper someday in the STEM fields as well. So um, I'll go through a little bit about how educators can use this project and then I can answer any questions and discussions um, about that. We are gonna have an online summit, May 12th and 13th. It is free to join if you wanna to come to the live sessions and it is easy to come and go. So um, we'll have several keynotes and breakouts and discussions, but is set up so that um, people can come and go around their schedules and you don't have to commit to the two full days if that doesn't work for you. So as I mentioned, this is an educational resource bringing together educators and STEM professionals while we all try to get through to the other side of this pandemic school year. Our website that we've built for the project is at stemleadstheway.org. And it is our hope that this could become a place of blogging and collaboration moving forward beyond just this uh, pandemic school year, which is why we use the term stemleadstheway.org. We'd like to continue to be involved in a lot of the STEM outreach and connections and you know, workforce development, ecosystem building that occurs in the state. So it's an opportunity to continue some of these collaborations across the 
nonprofits, across service co-ops like Sarah's involved with or works for, um, our educational institutions and our for-profit entities. I have a quick overview here. Uh, one of this is the sound I want to make sure was working. Of course, it's not going to play. There we go. So let me know if you guys can hear this. So the sound came through okay? All right, good. So um, our project components, we launched this project early this winter and over the last several months, we've been adding videos to the website and um, connecting with educators. So there are some ways to continue connecting yet this school year. We would love to help set up some online classroom visits for some of the people featured in the videos with educators. So that is something that we can do actively over the next several weeks. They could do a quick, you know, 15, 20 minute visit to a classroom and chat about some of the work they do and maybe directly connect it with some sort of lesson that is taking place in the classroom. And then, as I mentioned, we're gonna have this summit that brings together people across the STEM ecosystem. So it's not just for professionals, it's not just for educators, it's really meant to bring together a different uh, mix of people who are involved in all types of ways of building our STEM uh, future in the state and hoping to get some students to join us as well, some college students. Okay, so what we did is we have um, some videos we put together that are geared for grades seven to 12. And after interviewing some educators early on in this project and some people who have been involved in video production, we ultimately decided to have these people share a little bit more about who they are how they got into STEM, and then the piece of what they've been involved in with the pandemic. And what we've learned is that students want to see someone who looks like them, someone who might have a similar interest of the, as them, and also can see their way and how they could be a helper in many different ways. So that was kind of the goal with these videos was really to share that, you know, people when they're six, seven, eight years old, don't say, I'm going to be an engineer, I'm going to be a scientist. Some of us do, but a lot of us don't. And uh, what sort of interests do we have that lead us down this path um, to go into these fields? And then obviously we wanted to share some ways that individuals have been involved in helping with the pandemic. And that could be as broad as ensuring that wastewater continues to get where it needs to go while everybody was at home, obviously as big as vaccine delivery, but there's a lot of things in between um, and ways that people have been involved to the benefit of all of us. Okay, so this is the example of what some of the profiles look like on the website. There's a whole page of the videos and we still have a few we are adding and we'll have about 25 by the time we're done. And most of these people are available if an educator would like them to come in and visit their classroom via a, a quick video chat. So um, we have here, we have Kim and Micah and then um, Mangiri with 3M and Dr. Michael Joyner with the Mayo Clinic, a couple of people who took time out to do the interviewing. And then um, Jasmine is just delightful. She <laughs> is an educator um, at uh, Dunwoody and has just some wonderful programming that she does. And then Sandeep is with the uh, Department of Health and has had quite a bit to do with our, our water. So this is the page where the videos are that talks about exploring the STEM careers and they're all listed on one page. So students could pick one or two videos that they're gonna watch. It could be a writing assignment that's tied to it. There's, it could be some discussions, assessment, that sort of thing. Um, and then there is a whole page dedicated for ed educators that the resources are right there if you'd like it to, to tie it into some lesson. So um, 
we have some questions for student reflection. As I mentioned, a professional could come and visit the classroom. This could be turned into a writing assignment. Um, and it also directly connects with the science standards. So we, we made sure that that just fits right into what, what is going on in people's classrooms. Um, and that is stemleadstheway.org slash educator resources. And these are the questions that we put together that have to do with um, you know, what could just be easily implemented somewhere. So not, it does not need to stay within this framework, but we at least wanted to have some easy ways that people could implement in the classroom the uh, video in interviews that have been done. Any questions that you guys have right now? All right. So we have our presenting sponsors who are all going to have a session at the summit. And we're really taking a look at this summit as kind of what's next on the other side of the pandemic, both for education, STEM education, and for employers as they're hiring. As we all know, we've all shifted and shifted and shifted again, and some things will return that have not been happening and other things are gonna be different going forward. And what does that look like as we are educating our young people? What does that look like as people are hiring and how can we continue to reshuffle some of those things? A lot of the skill sets that we were talking about 18 months ago might look differently now as people are hiring. And so the goal of the summit is to bring together some people from uh, the STEM workforce and from our STEM educators and start taking a look at what's next. Um, and when you look at all of the innovation and the collaboration that has gone on in the last you know, 15 months, how can we continue some of those solid partnerships? There are ways that people have started working together where they may not have had reason to previously. Um, and there are some valuable things occurring there. So that's the goal is to discuss some of that here in a couple of weeks. Um, here's a couple of other supporting organizations. These Many of these organizations we partner with directly with Engineering Alliance Minnesota throughout the year. I know some of them have been very supportive, Sarah, of your guys' outreach work in the southeastern part of the state. Um, with our engineering membership in Minnesota Math Counts, we do reach every corner of the state. So we like to make sure that we're really connecting with people um, across the state. And then I was. Um, Lucky to have the opportunity to interview Dr. Mike Ulsterholm. And so the, there are two videos by him as part of the project. One is a longer one about how he ended up in STEM um, and obviously became a lead epidemiologist in the state. And then just a brief one that answers the question of kind of what would he share with students who are considering a career in STEM. So I will play that here for you guys. Let me know if for some reason the sound isn't working. Sometimes people are intimidated by the concept of being involved with STEM. They feel like, oh, it's too difficult. I can't understand it. I won't know what to do. Um, how do I compete? Don't let that happen. Let yourself try it. Get involved. Um, you know, and it may not be one element of science that, for example, is your forte, but another area might be one. You know, the person who is out working in the field with wildlife, tracking down moose, uh, working on that, they're very different than the person who is in the laboratory dealing with viruses and bacteria. They're, surely their subjects are a different size. But when that virus or that bacteria kills the moose or even infects humans, suddenly that laboratory and that virus and that bacteria that that scientist has been working on, they all come together. They all are part of the team. And so I would just urge you to see the fact that if you're involved with STEM, you'll never be alone. You'll never by yourself basically have to solve all the problems of the world, but you'll also have an opportunity to do great personal things that could in fact very well change the world with just one discovery. So please get involved. All right, so.
So I went over most of the details here about this um, coming up on May 12th and 13th. And I want to just encourage you guys to invite people in your networks to join us. The registration is open. Uh, we are still filling a couple of breakout sessions. I'm working on a couple of different discussion roundtables, and then we'll have some of that stuff updated. But the, the main keynotes are set, and um, it is free to join. There is a $50 fee if somebody wants to follow up with you know, education credits and some of the recordings and things like that that take time to process. But if you want to come and go, that part of the registration is free. So it's either free or $50. And that is the overview of, of our project. I intended to um, have some discussion and answer some questions, share some ideas. I would love to hear from you guys ways that you see as opportunities for professionals and educators to continue collaborating. Um, I'm very passionate about helping make these connections, obviously working directly with educators and students with math counts, and then obviously with the, directly with the professionals of the Engineering Alliance Minnesota. I, I work in both areas and I'm always looking for ways that we can continue to build our, our workforce. So here is the project website. My computer would not freeze on me. And the video page I was talking about. So Katie, you've got a, this is more of a parent question, but I've got a son mm -hmm. that's in uh, civil engineering at UMD and a daughter that's uh, you know, going into biology at Augustana. Mm -hmm. Is this something they could, could log into and? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah there's, so there's no login, right, Katie? Like you literally just go to this website and it's correct. all right there. Yep. We wanted to make it as easy to use as possible. Uh, and then there, there is a blog component on the site that we're gonna continue to build out. You know, we're kind of building this as we go. And so we've shifted as the pandemic has shifted as well, obviously yeah. as we all have. I, um, I'm curious yeah. to see the, the microbiologist from 3M. I didn't mm -hmm. put those two together, you know what I mean? Uh, microbiology and 3M, but it makes sense, but uh, it's not yeah. would automatically see a microbiologist going. Yeah, so I, it was really exciting to see the different types of professionals who said they would do an interview with us because it really varies across the STEM sector and across the way that they um, have used their skills. And, um, you know, it was our goal to, to do that, but it was, it was so interesting to find out more too about how and why people <laughs> chose what they studied and how they ended up where they did and so this is the page where they all are. So absolutely your kids would, would find this interesting and could learn a little bit about who these people are and, and what they're up to.